All right. Thanks for joining me for another Coyote Radio Show and Podcast. Welcome back. Got an awesome guest today, Jeremy Pinnell from Kentucky's with us. Great writer, artist, very soulful, very honest. Uh, good, wholesome, good country music. Bottom line, um, I love what he's doing. He's, he's been road dogging it. And uh, yeah, he's putting out some good stuff. I can't wait to talk to him. We're going to talk a little bit about his background, some of his music and writing process, process and uh, a big New Year's Eve show we got coming up here at Duke's Indy. I'll be there. Um, it should be a packed house. We got Hannah Juanita is going to open, Eric Bolander, and of course, Jeremy Pinnell is going to finish off the night. Uh, so it's going to be a banger. Grab the tickets in the link below and uh, we'll see you there. Got new merch. I'll have these at the show as well. You got to, you know, finally got the logo on a T-shirt here. Nothing crazy, but this is the selling point because it's true. Zero tolerance for corn dick pop country. I just can't do it no more. I need to hear good music. The radio sucks, so here's your here's your chance to pick these up at the show or Coyote Radio Show and Podcast dot com. We'll have them available there. So, uh, yeah. I think that pretty much covers everything. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, and sharing this if you can. I'm on uh, Instagram, Facebook, of course, YouTube. And uh, the website now is fully open where you can find uh, music, old interviews, new interviews, the radio show portion of this, and, of course, the merch page. I got something cool coming up, too, for the merch page. You know, since it's called The Coyote Show and I do taxidermy work, uh, I'm going to be selling some pretty interesting stuff on there that's coyote related, like uh, maybe a coyote skull, got some coyote hides I might sell on there as well. Just, you know, I got extra. Anyway, let's go talk to Jeremy. And thanks for uh, joining us. Appreciate you being on, man, for the first time. Um, normally, we start, you know, for first time guests at the beginning kind of kind of share where you're from how you got into music and what kind of pretty much put you on the path that you're on now yeah yeah no i appreciate you having me i i, I really appreciate this i um i um uh, i grew up here in northern kentucky i was born in cincinnati uh moved over to kentucky around the age of seven um you know grew up in church uh listening to church music I grew up in a really religious home uh, and then and, uh, broke free from that and started listening to like punk rock and hardcore at a young age. And then around uh, 18, 19, I started listening to country music. So it's um, I got that paycheck tape when I was 20. Uh, so that was about 25 years ago. I got my first paycheck tape and uh and then just kind of ran with it, you know, like songs like 15 Beers and uh, Drinking and Driving That Woman Right Off My Mind. And uh, and it started there. And then I, I found Alternative Country, which was great. Uh, you know, like uh, Uncle Tupelo, Sunbolt, Wilco, Whiskey Town, uh, and things like that. And one of the records, that, I don't know if you're familiar with Palace Music, but... Uh, uh, we were visiting some friends in New York. When I was 18, we we took a bus. I took $30 and I got on a bus and went to New York. And uh, and a friend of mine was listening to Palace music up in New York. And it, and it changed everything for me, really. I really wanted to play like folk music and country music. So, <laughs> and then here we are. And that's you know, awesome. To, uh, There's so many uh, artists that, that that I've had on, or at least the people that I like to listen to, uh, at some point they were listening to punk music or metal or rock, but then next thing you know, they're like in the country and bluegrass. It's like, it's like a, definitely a trending thing that happens naturally. I mean, when, when you're young, you know, you're just looking to fight people, you know, you're not looking, you're not really thinking about the, the girl that broke your heart too much. You're thinking about like, like bucking the system or, you know, talking back to your parents or arguing with the police. You know, you're not really. Yeah. Um, at least for me. <laughs> Rebellious teenager. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And um, 
I think you uh, you show that in your songs. You know, that's what I really love about your music lyrically too. Uh, I feel like you're an honest, uh, and you portray who you are as a person, like it or love it. It's just like who you are, uh, and it makes for some damn good music. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like you have to be honest with people. If you're not honest with people, people catch on to that, man. People catch on if you're not telling the truth or, you know, I always like, I I, I think there was a lot of, you can't go wrong if you're just singing about yourself and your experience, you know? Um, so, I don't know if you're talking about yourself, you can't really screw up, you know? And if you're honest, I don't know, people don't like it when you lie to them, dude, you know? So... Absolutely. Helps to be on. Yeah. Um, so you've got a few records out. Well, if you consider the live records, you know, a handful. What's in the works for the future? You Are you working on any current projects as far as records or albums? Uh, I don't know. I always like, I'm always writing and, um, uh, uh yeah, I mean there might be some stuff coming up, but you know it's all it's all chill for right now. I'm just trying to regroup a little bit, you know. Uh, I just need to chill for a while, you know. Like um, I I can only road dog it so much, you know. We've been hitting it hard for six or seven years, so. Oh yeah, I need to, you know. Yeah, stay home for the holidays a little bit. <laughs> Jeez, dude, I just want to <laughs> chill, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not easy. It is a grind for you guys to uh, yeah. be on the road. Uh, I've seen you live before at Duke's, which you we got a big show coming up here on New Year's Eve. Uh, I'll yeah. say that, too, about you. I, uh, there's a lot of guys that sound pretty good on record and get stuff polished up or whatever, and, you know, it sounds pretty clean. Then I'll see them live, and it's like – it's not really the same or it's not really, I don't know. I don't know if they overdid it in studio or what. Um, and they just don't really sound that great, but you, you're, you really are, you know, demand attention basically on stage. Like you, you do a good job as a front man. Like people are paying attention to you uh, and you sound great. So that was another reason why I think, you know, cause it, I listen to so much music these days and I'm constantly jumping around, especially for this podcast. And uh, you're the real deal in a live setting as well. Yeah, we uh, when we started, we um, we we would try to record with one microphone and like so everybody had to play their part. You know, everybody had to like and uh, I think that like I think if you're good, people are going to listen to you. You don't have to make people listen to you, you know, like if people will hear you, if they, if they hear something that they like, you know, you know, it's, it's just, you get used to playing in bars where people don't give a shit and you just kind of right. learn to deal with it. You know, you just like either enjoy what you're doing and do the best you can every night you show up, you be professional, you know, you know what time to get on stage, you know what time to get off stage. Don't be a dickhead and just kind of screw around on stage. Do your business. Give the people your, you know, like give them a good show. And I've had a lot of people like teach me and um, suggest things. And, uh, you know, you just be a professional, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who do you like uh, these days? Who are you listening to currently, music wise? Like, who you think's really doing a good job out there? Uh, who do I think's going? To, uh, me and my wife saw Jamie Wyatt and Nikki Lane Saturday or Sunday night, and and, uh, and Nikki's always great, man. She's like, she I think she's like a good um, example of like a working musician, you know. Like she don't take no shit, and she just she does her thing, you know. And Jamie's just a great songwriter, and she's got great lyrics. And she's got a great voice, and uh, yeah. But um, uh, I I over the summer we were touring down in Texas, and uh, and I came across this band called Urban Heat, and it's like a post punk kind of electronic kind of band, and I really dig that band. 
and um i list i've been listening to them a little bit and you know jerry lee died and and i'm and i've been kind of like going back and listening to jerry lee and and uh and his cousin um uh why is it slipping from me uh uh mickey gilly you know so yeah. i've been listening to that going back and forth just that it's just a good sound you know yeah I do that too, but when someone like that passes away, I definitely go back. I've been listening to a lot of Loretta Lynn here. Yeah, yeah. I always loved her band, man. I always thought her recordings were like the band was just so sick, you know. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of someone that doesn't take no shit, <laughs> like Nikki, Loretta was like that too. I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I think women have it like a little bit tougher in the music industry. Like, you know, they. They probably deal with a bunch of bullshit like people ain't willing to, you know, mess with dudes that way as much as they are with women, you know. So women kind of like they have to be tough, man. Like, you know, it's unfortunate, but a lot of uh, girl songwriters that I know, they don't take shit from anybody, you know. They're hard yeah. workers and uh, whatever. <laughs> so um, got the Duke show coming up. Are you coming full band? Yeah, whole, yeah, we got a great band. Yeah, yeah, we got Junior Tutwiler on guitar, dude. He's a monster. And then got my good friend Cameron Cochran on bass. And, uh, you know, we got uh, gorgeous Bobby back there on drums, you know. And uh, <laughs> and then uh, I think uh, Hannah Juanita, she's playing. Yeah, Hannah Mose. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll be good. And then Mr. Bolander, he's he's always he's just a super nice dude. Um, I always like giving him a hard time. I'm sure he likes giving me a hard time too. So. I met Eric uh, this past summer briefly at a, a festival backstage. Super nice guy. And I've had Hannah on the show and Mo's a couple times already. So yeah, that's one heck of a banger lineup. Uh, for anyone listening, I got the link below. There's tickets there. So grab a ticket if you're listening and make it to the show. It's gonna it's gonna be a I it's gonna be a packed house, I'm sure of it. So oh yeah, I hope so, dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a good yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Good. So what uh you're writing um What's kind of like your process? Because I like I was telling you, you know, that's kind of what I latch on to with musicians. A lot of times it's really about the lyrical content. And for the most part, I mean, there's all different things, but I really love writing. And uh, I just was kind of curious on what your approach is or your style or if you even have one. Some people just, you know, write stuff on napkins or or you just actually sit down and thought, thoughtfully put something to paper. Yeah, I um, I generally like uh, have a song idea. I don't really sit down with the guitar. I uh, just kind of I get a melody, or I I think of something I would like to say, or something that's kind of funny or kind of witty. I think, and then uh, I I'll get the melody and I'll kick around the melody for you know two or three days, and then I'll sit down with the guitar and just you know work it out with the guitar, and uh, that's generally how I do it uh sometimes i'll i'll be playing the guitar and come up with something that i like the way it sounds and, and then i'll put words to it but that, that's it's more common for me just to like hear something that i that i think would sound cool that i like and uh that uh that i think's catchy and then and then i'll uh yeah and then i'll start to work with it you know but i uh yeah i don't um uh, I don't have a lot of time to sit down and play guitar. So I'm just, I just do it on the fly, you know, uh, either on the lawnmower or on the way to work or back home from work, you know? So, yeah. 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 When did you actually start playing, playing the guitar? Uh, I was, uh, I was pretty young. Uh, I, my dad got, my dad had a, an acoustic guitar and he he said uh 
if you can play this, then I'll think about getting the electric guitar. So I think around 13 or 14, he got me my first electric guitar. So, yeah. And uh, yeah. So I started there. Nice. Yeah. I wish my parents would have got me one. <laughs> I was more were doing parents, weren't they? <laughs> I was more doing sports and stuff, but like, they didn't think yeah. to give me a guitar. I wish they would have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my dad played music in church, so I see my dad and then on Christmas time he would uh sit around and entertain guests with like he would, you know, sing like some old Crosby Stills and Nash just on like Christmas and uh you know and uh, and then I eventually I I like would drop out of school and, and he would uh take me to work with him. He said if you're not going to go to school, you got to go to work and then uh we he would let me listen to like the Beatles and uh like Jimi Hendrix and stuff with him while we were at work, you know? So I got exposed to some cool rock and roll that way, you know? So, yeah. What, what did you actually work when you dropped out at his yeah. work or just went, went there? Uh, my dad had his own business. My dad did uh, like uh leather and vinyl uh, interior repair on like cars. So we oh, would okay. go lot, lot. We would go, we would hit maybe, three or four car lots a day and he would fix whatever they had there. And then we would go on to the next, you know? And, uh, and I was, I think I dropped out. I would drop, I, I would, I would say I wasn't going to school and they'd make me go to work. So I would go on and off to school from the age of 15 on. I was just really wouldn't go to school. You know, I just kind of go here and then there. And then uh, by the age of 17, I was like, I'm done with school. You know, yeah. Uh, so, wasn't for me, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you seem to be doing all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine, dude. I'm totally fine. <laughs> I love I, life. Is good. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Are you? Some of the records you have out now are. Will any of them be available on vinyl? at the show uh they should all be yeah I, th I think i got everything in stock now oh nice i've been dying to get one yeah. okay cool i'll be picking one up for sure all right i'm gonna charge you double <laughs> <laughs> only if it's signed <laughs> uh, deal deal yeah yeah man. um I gotta mention the 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 song, the your recent sing, most recent single, Rodeo, with Arlo live at Southgate. Awesome venue. I love Southgate. Go there often. Um, and you guys sound really good, good together. Yeah, yeah. Me and him been singing together for a long time. We started singing, and then we sang together into our late twenties, and then. Uh, and we kind of went our separate ways. So we we love singing together. And we were we're such good friends that it's like it, you never skip a beat. You know, you have friends like that. Oh you yeah. Don't run into and he's and then you just like pick right up right down. where you left off. Yeah, yeah. It's like that with him. <laughs> so uh yeah, he's uh he's my uh he's my friend. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was on the show probably a year, over a year ago. I need to see if he got something new for us to get on here sometime. But uh, I really enjoy yeah. that that collaboration between you two. Uh, I don't know. There's something about it. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we've we been playing that song. Uh, uh, like I said, in the early 20s, we wrote that song. So that song's got to be 18, 19 years old, you know? So... I mean, that's wild. But yeah, it was on that. It, I put it on that Ohio Kentucky record because uh, at that point I just got out of. Uh, I was in like a, uh, like a. I was kind of homeless at that point. Well, I was living in a home men's homeless shelter, and then got out, started working, and then, uh, and then um, got cleaned up and was able to record a record and i recorded that uh ohio kentucky record and 
to Arlo came in and sang on the record and uh, did background vocals on the record, which was real nice. And we did a, a rodeo on that record. And then, so it was nice when Goodbye LA came out, we, we played it that night and he came out and sang it. And it, it was one of the only tracks that really came out real good from that night. So we, we decided to release it, you know? Yeah. I don't know. You're, you're passive. Run it, you know, running in with the law and um, addiction and all that stuff. There's several artists I have on here. Like, and we talk about this stuff all the time. Um, it's a crazy, you know, thing to think about story wise and what people go through. But man, does it put out some heartfelt music. And it, it, it just sucks that people have to go through that shit to get something so good on, on record. Uh, and it must be because everybody battles their own thing and they can relate to it, is what I'm guessing. It's only going it makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we all deal with our own things. I, uh, you know, it's, and I, I, maybe we'll circle back to that honesty thing. Like, like people like it, dude. You're honest about, you're honest about your life and the, and people can connect with that. You know, uh, people love seeing, uh, like when somebody tells a story about some personal things and, and, and then that gives you the freedom to be like, I understand that. Cause I do that. I did that same thing, you know, and you can, can connect with another human being and, I, and I, being able to connect with it, another human being is a, like a powerful thing, you know? Yeah. It's like that next level. There's something there. There's something there in between, like the human connection, the way, the connection between everything. Really, you know, it, everything's connected, and and I think that um, sharing things with people is uh, personal things that you go through is a is a powerful way to connect yourself. You know, uh, I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm probably sound like I'm full of shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it all, I mean, it's just a common thing. And I don't know, my wife's always like, why are you always listening to depressing shit in there? I'm like, well, damn it, it, it feels right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what else to tell you. I always think yeah. about that. Like, well, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, and I really appreciate you just giving us a quick backstory on everything and uh, just want everyone out there to grab a ticket, support Jeremy, and he's, he's on the road often. Check out his website. All those links will be down below. Grab grab some merch while you're at it and uh, support good music. We're, uh, you know, sick of the radio crap. And so guys like you need a lot more spotlight and deserve a lot more credit for what's going on out there in the music industry so hats off to you appreciate it yeah yes sir thank you yeah i'll see you in a couple of weeks man can't wait to shake your hand yeah sounds good dude all right have a good one all right, buddy. you too